Teresa, are you ready? I'm ready. You ready? I am ready. Sister friends, are you ready? Yes, we are. You ready? <laughs> mm -hmm. Y'all know what time it is. It's time for a cup of soul, where wisdom is dropped, truth is shared, and there's enough love for a second helping. And sister friends, that second helping is for you. And you, and you, and there's one for you, Candace. And there's one for you too. Take your mind. Welcome, welcome back to a cup of soul. Hello, we're a cup of soul. I'm Teresa. And I'm Candace. <laughs> I think she's scanning this today. I am. I'm laughing at the cup of soul part. I couldn't help it. I just, it just makes me laugh. It just makes me laugh. Yes, and we're a cup of soul. It is good to be back. Mm -hmm. It's good to be back. Yes. yes. I'm excited about this episode. So put on your seatbelts. We're going to step away from the book in this one, and we're going to talk about what we did this past weekend. Mm hmm. Hmm. Did we go to Hawaii? Maybe we mm. went to Cancun. Oh. Hmm. Maybe we went mm. to Paris. Oh. Or maybe we had a sister friend giving gathering. Woo -woo. Woo -woo. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. Yes, that That's is it. what That's we did. One. That's the one right there. We did it. Mm -hmm. It was such a great time. So we're going we're gonna to share a little bit about that. So... Here we go. You still can grab your pen, grab your journal. Um, you never know what you what nugget you're going to get because we're going to tell you something about the Bible. So grab it. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. You want to pray us in, Candace? Yes. Heavenly Father, we thank you for. We thank you for living out the very word that we can do the things that you have promised us, that we can come together, we can break bread, we can worship, we can pray, we can be in communion with each other, Lord, just as you intended to be. And in those moments, there is healing and there's moments there is sharing. And there's just that opportunity to reflect on your goodness as it's happening. So we just thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, for your promises that they are true, and for all that you have blessed us with. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, go for your questions. All righty. Just, they're easy. They're easy. The first one is, since you are a music aficionado, you love your, yourself some music, what is your least favorite genre of music? Oh. Your least favorite. That's not a good question. Why? You have to answer Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, I'm not a, I'm not a country, you know, but there's some country songs. I... No, you just have to pick one general. There's always an exception to the rule. Yes, there is. Okay. If you, or what do you listen to least often? Give me, okay, give me that. What do you list like? What is your like? Man, I don't really listen to. You go what? first. Well, mine is absolutely country. I don't. I don't listen. But again, I could probably name three or four songs that I do like. Mm -hmm. But if you were to go into my car, it is not programmed on a station. Mm -hmm. So that would be the one that I listen to the least. Okay, it would be the probably country. Yeah. See, see, that wasn't so hard. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Y'all, she just can't. Um, the next one is, what activities did you love to do with your family growing up? Because you grew up on a farm, so I know it's farm. I'm sure it's yeah. farming. No, well, I loved I loved riding bicycles. That was we we would ride bikes. Like we would go on Sunday, we would rest, and then we would go to my grandmother's house, granny's house, because I had a granny and a grandmother. Um, to tell them apart, and um, my granny probably lived about 11 miles, so we'd ride our bicycle, bicycles with my dad to, and my mom would be there. She'd drive the truck because we wouldn't ride it 
back home. Um, so I love that. Um, I grew up with all my cousins, so it was like nine of us. We lived right there all together. So we was all together. It was so funny. We were mm -hmm. so together. If you got in trouble, one got in trouble, everybody got in trouble. So I love <laughs> playing with them. Um, we always went. This is this is a wild one. I'm telling you, like my whole life. Um, when when we were growing up on my mom's side, we always went on vacation, but all her siblings went with us. We all went together. It was like a convoy. So we would go like to Virginia Beach and we'd all follow each other to Virginia Beach. So we always did vacations together. Wherever it was, okay. we were all together. Whether we and my mom's sister lived in Kentucky. And so when we went to Kentucky, we all went together. And we stayed at her house in her house all together when we went to so yeah husbands wives cousins the whole nine. Oh, uh, that's nice yeah i like it i like it um mine was games we were big on board games card games i probably have a secret skill that i don't tell most people about that i'm quite the card shark are you <laughs> i was yeah all kinds of games um you know from Hard cheesy to trouble to Udo, like just games. Okay, can you would... play some spades? I can. Oh, let's I can do play that spades. right there. I can play gin rummy. I can play spit. Like, I got quite an arsenal of card games nice. that I know how to play growing up. But Monopoly was the one, and it would go on for days. Yes. And my mother hated it because she's like, I can't keep playing with you but my favorite was when it was my dad and my uncle when he would visit oh it, it, it would yes. just get ugly and <laughs> making up house rules it was just oh uh, and then my dad uh played dominoes a lot oh, with yes. he had like a group of, of friends that come over and i just remember hearing the the bones yes. hit all over and i'd be like i play and they would let me shuffle the dominoes when I was little until they taught me how to play as I got older. Mm -hmm. But I just like to be there. So yeah. ours was games. We yeah. just, I like games, card yeah. games, all that stuff. No, when I would play spades, because I learned how to play spades when I got married. Now that's how I learned how to talk junk. Because we, mm -hmm. you, you couldn't beat, you could not beat us in spades. Like we was yeah. like, we would tra we was a traveling spade people. So right. yeah. <laughs> So yeah. So yes, I I have quite the quite the card shark on the low. I like a good card game. So checkers. I, just, I check like off. to talk. I like to talk smack. Yeah. <laughs> I would do that in gin in gin rummy. Oh, mm -hmm. you couldn't tell me nothing about gin yeah. rummy. I was I was gonna get you. We need yeah. a card night. Right. Come in. Cards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they might they might not like us. <laughs> right. Well, I don't know. I, I haven't played. You know, being saved and all. It might look different. <laughs> Just kidding. This is true. This is true. <laughs> Talking smack might look a little yeah. different. <laughs> yeah. Might look a little different. And then your worship song for the week. Um, my worship song for the week. It's it's always the same. Honestly, it's the goodness of the Lord and how it happened mm -hmm. this week was, I was in storage and I don't like going to storage. I just don't like pulling stuff out. And I do, I have a bad back. So part of going to storage is I don't want to do anything with it because it really hurts my back. And so um, I was like, I got this. I'm feeling good. And I put on my worship music and then the guy was watching me and um, he came to see was I okay. Because you can see me on the camera, but I'm in there worshiping <laughs> and shouting and the light will go off and I had to turn it back on. So I was shouting. So he came to check on me. See what, let's see what was going on. Sam, are you all right? But I was singing the goodness of the Lord. Jen, I listened to Jen and Jen Johnson and CC one and over and over and over. Yep. What's yours? Um, Israel Houghton, Houghton Houghton. I'm not sure how to say mm -hmm. it. Uh, moving forward. I oh, heard it. Not going uh, back. Right. I heard it and was like, oh, and then I just kept my caught myself just singing it and singing it and singing it and singing it. So now it's just on loop right now. We're not so. going back. All right. Nope. I caught I caught the chorus and that was it. Nice. <laughs> it's been in my mind. That is a nice song. 
Mm-hmm. Nice. And that is it. Those are my questions for the week. Okay, I got a question. Have you ever been hitchhiking? Hitchhiking? Yeah. Absolutely not. No? No, man. I watch too much true crime for that. Nope. So that means you, <laughs> you're going to automatically die if you're a hitchhiker. I'm assuming. Automatically. <laughs> you're automatically not getting to your destination. So, okay. no thanks. I'm and I, Nope. <laughs> okay, mm-hmm. I got it. And Have, have you? No. Oh, I was about to say, what story is about to happen? No, I would probably just sit in the car and cry. I will just wait for a ride. That is, that is why I have roadside service. If my car breaks down, that is why I pay. I will continue forever to the day I die, pay for roadside service. Okay, that's what I it's for. I will just walk until I take a break, and then I will walk some more. I'm not doing it. Walk? Oh, I'm not getting Meaning if I had to get somewhere and I couldn't? I'm still not going to get in a car with a stranger. Okay. I will just I will walk until my legs say rest, and then I will just take my time. I'm not getting out of the car. It's called protection. <laughs> <laughs> Something might come get me. Now, have you picked up a he- uh, hitchhiker? I have. Um, it was a woman and her children. I had to be, gosh, was I even 30? Mm. This was a long time ago. But it was a woman and her children, and it was just... I was, I think I was equally, I was terrified to even do that, but it was, they were on the side of the road and you could see like the car was smoking. It was just a situation. So I pulled up and just was, are you okay? And she wasn't, and she was crying. And I was like, I'm not a murderer. I'm not a murderer. And I literally was like, I'm not a murderer. I'm not strange. But if you want, I can drive you to the gas station, you and your kids to the gas station. Like you look like a murderer. That's hilarious. Like you look like a murderer. <laughs> but I was just like, I'm not strange. I'm not weird. Like I just, I, you're out here and the gas station was at least at like a five, 10 minute drive. I was like, I can drive you to the gas station. And she was like, she looked at me and I was like, I get it if you say no. But she, she did it. She got in the car and I took him to the gas station. And I waited with her until the, until her brother, somebody came for her. She was able to call them and they came. Hmm. Yeah, where you headed? Get on in, cowboy. Right. That's <laughs> no. Mm-mm. I've never picked up anybody. <laughs> I, right. Yeah, I haven't watched any true crime. Did you say true crime? Mm-hmm. And so, therefore, since I don't watch true crime, I'm not going to be involved in no kind of crime. Right. So, you don't right. go. You're not going to see me on true crime. Right. I pray for you. Facts as I yeah. drive by. Yeah. Okay. Just check in to see see if you picked up anybody. <laughs> All righty. So you ready to jump in? Yes, ma'am. All right. Um. So we did. We had the sister friend gathering this um past weekend, and um it was just it was a very beautiful occasion, and um it was just. It was just a blessing to see the Lord work in just making a place for women to come and connect. So the youngest one was 12, right? Mm -hmm. So the youngest one was 12 um, to all the way up. I think it was, I think our oldest was... Didn't she say 67? Yeah, I think 67. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was our oldest. And it was just beautiful. It was it was like um, the rainbow. It was just all different nationalities, all different walks of life, all different experiences. Uh, we had some college girls there. Um, it was just beautiful. We had high school girls there, middle school girl there. But it was just nice to see them and just be in the room and just see, you know, that that was like God's heaven that that's Mm -hmm. what it's going to be like in heaven, that we'd all be there. I think about this this passage right here. A friend is Proverbs. I'm sure you've heard it before, but it's Proverbs 17, 17. A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for a time of adversities. And, you know, it was just, just that time of connection and being together and um, hearing stories. Um, and it was so cute. Uh, one lady, 
when we first started, she said no. I don't know if you re remember her. She said no. She said, were you mm -hmm. over there? And then, yes. you know, once we went back and she was like, okay, I'm ready. But I, you know, I was praying like, okay, she, that she have this space and feel comfortable enough to, um, share whatever part that God gave mm -hmm. her. Cause I wanted her to have a voice. So yes. what's your thoughts? It just amazes me how, and it shouldn't, right? It shouldn't amaze me, but yet it continuously does the faithfulness of when we are so intentional with God's word. Mm -hmm. Like we read the word and, and we know things. Okay. But when you really are intentional with it and do it in, in practice and in action, just the way he is faithful always amazes me. You know, we started praying for the women months ago. Mm -hmm. Not knowing, even before the the flyer and the information went out, we were praying for the women, and we were praying for the room, and pray like we were just praying for the details that for it to come together. Right. And so, to for me, there was a moment of looking around the room when we were sitting in the circle, being like, "Man, I didn't know it four or five months ago, but God knew." As we were praying mm -hmm. that it was specifically for every single woman that was right. in the room. Right. And it, it it just like, ah, it blows my mind because you can just see like this is the word in action. This is what happens when you are intentional and you stand on that and nothing else. Right. You know, because like I said, we didn't know their names, but he did. Right. And then there, there they were. They were in the room. <laughs> there, there they were. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it just, it's just the coolest thing. And it just, it does. It keeps me in awe. I'm like, man, that is, uh, uh, it's just good. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and, you know, I want to go back in our, um, at the, in the village, in a sister friend village, um, in the passages this week was one of the passages, which was uh, when Jesus uh, fed the 5,000 and he had the two loaves of bread, excuse me, five loaves of bread and two fish. And that was one of our morning devotions. And it dawned on me when I was working with that scripture and understanding that Jesus said, just sit down, just sit down. And I felt like in my heart, he was just saying like, Teresa, just have them sit down. Like they don't, I don't just sit down, just have them sit down. And just think about what sitting down means. and. Even in that story, he had them sitting down and he didn't even speak a message. He didn't preach to them. Everybody wasn't saved. Everybody wasn't even walking with him. Some didn't even know who he was. And he still uh, blessed them and he still, he fed them. And not even that, he made sure they had stuff to go home. And I, that was the vision that God gave me, just have them sit. It wasn't about a preaching message. It wasn't about throwing something, just watch God's miracle. And that literally, that's what you just said, just watching God's miracle right there in front of us. I mean, it was from us working together as a team from the beginning to literally cleaning up was not, I mean, literally all the way through was nothing but God, the laughter in the room. Um, when I got to make faces at you guys, that was even good too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But um, it was just good. It was good. It was just God's hand was really there. He was present. So, yeah. And it shows you just how important we are to each other. You know, and yeah. I think that's, like you said, to sit down. Because when you're sitting down, I don't want to say what else are you doing, but it be it's a passive posture, but it's not at the same time. Right. Because when you're sitting down, you're, you know, you're aware of your surroundings differently. Mm -hmm. You're having conversations, but you're looking at the person next to you and across from you. So you're doing all of these other things. And it just showed it to me also, it was, this is why connection is so important. Right. Like this, this is why, because if you're not sitting down, you don't get this. Right. This can only come from us taking that pause. And, you know, that yes, this time. And I think it was even more, acknowledge it to me because this is such a busy time of the year yeah. with things that come up so to be like no i'm just gonna sit down 
and I'm going to have a conversation. And then I was amazed at the things that were shared. Oh my I was God, like, yeah. Jesus. Mm-hmm. Just to be able to be in a room where women are sharing their life story, essentially from 16 to today, and mm-hmm. just piece of it. It was like, this is why we need each other. Yeah. Because we need to hear that. Yeah. And connect to that 16-year-old lesson, that 25-year-old lesson, that 67-year-old wisdom. Like, you needed to connect to all those different pieces. Because, yes, the woman sitting in the chair was present, but that woman sitting in the chair is the culmination of all those experiences that she's had. Yeah. And I don't know. I just, I felt like, and just like you said, it was just the stories and... And the encouragement, you know, even when we could take and throw little encouragements out, I felt like we were like the the friend that stands right there in the middle to encourage them. One of the scriptures I shared with them, I only shared, shared a little bit, but two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them fall down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. The cord of three strands is not quickly shaken. That's Ecclesiastes 4, um, 9 through 12. And I don't know, I just, it just, you know, really made me look at the friendship. Some of the ladies came with friends as well or another, their sister. And even to see that, to be that friend, like, you know, let's be that friend that others can count on. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna call a name out, Christine and Cheryl. They've been friends since I think, uh, did she say sixth grade or second grade? But they've been- Four. Christina Martin. I think she said six, but I mean, okay. either way it's a long time. Yeah, but they've been friends that long. But I just thought, like, let us be that friend to others, that someone that you can count on. Like, two are better than one. And uh, even in that encouraging meant of coming in together and and Christine knowing us and um, knowing her friend, you know, and mm-hmm. making her friend feel like this is a safe place for you. And to find out literally that her friend lives down here and goes to East County Rock was like, yes, like she's, you Mm -hmm. know, she's close. So opening those doors to build that friendship and to nurture that is awesome. And, you know, when you must bind ourselves together as Christians in friendship, that is love, that is support, that is encouragement literally for our day-to-day struggles and we heard all the struggles in the room even um we got to see um christine jackson for the first time which was such a delight yes that was cool shout out christine (laughs) yes and literally her sister who looks just like her 18 months apart i think they said Uh but they were such a delight but i still i think about like they just had a you know i'm sure they've had some rifts in their life um because both of them have lived a long life, but um, just to see their friendship, and they were so much alike, and Mm -hmm. it was so cute when, I think it was Christine was talking, and um, her sister, like, hit her in the back, like, go. (laughs) I thought it was so cute, (laughs) and then it was, and then sister was talking, and then Christine is, like, rubbing sister's back. It was really cute, so, you know, um, and it just helped you really look at relationships and, you know, who stands in the middle with you and taking that time to thank those friends who strengthen you. I think we stop doing that. We are, um, we are ready to always get something from someone, but taking that time to thank those friends who strengthen you, um, mm-hmm. who are there in the middle with you. Um, and, um, I don't know, it was just so, so beautiful of literally sitting down before the Lord and letting God do something and, you know, hearing the girls' stories, the ones that were in college and what they wanted to be and how everybody else wanted to be something. 
and uh, watching their, you know, their stories and their lives and how it evolved and things that have come about was amazing. Um, but yeah, I'm, I realize I'm just sitting here doing all the talking, but your turn, go for it. <laughs> no, and I'm agreeing with you. And I, you know, just like I said, it, it just, it, it just opens up that like those feel goods, you know, to say that it's not, I don't want to say it doesn't matter, but it doesn't matter because mm -hmm. every piece we are so interwoven in everybody else's story yeah you know you can hear like yeah i felt that way at one time in my life too you did too wow yeah. Yeah. Or, or that's how you got here was you re you pulled on this scripture or you got into this women's group and now you're an author and you thought you were going to be a nurse and yeah. just to hear that that trajectory you 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 can find yourself in other stories yeah and you connect but when we don't talk for i don't know embarrassment fear shame for whatever reason that keeps us silent that's what we're robbing ourselves of yeah we're robbing ourselves of being able to see one another in each other's story and the fact that there were young girls there part of me was like man this is going over their head a little bit but then mm -hmm. And some of it should have been, but it was that, but it's the seeds that are being planted is yeah, what matters. Exactly. Yeah. The seeds are happening right now. So at, at whatever time that God deems is right, the sprout from this is going to happen and it's going to serve them in the way he needs it to. Yeah. So we became part of somebody else's story just by sharing ours. Mm -hmm. I just, that's so cool. Yeah. And, you know, and even the ones that I've known, just listening to their stories and seeing their growth. And, and um, I, I saw, you know, Krista, and you've known Krista for, what, about mm -hmm. four years through me. Mm -hmm. But it was really neat to hear her talk and see her growth, um, mm -hmm. you know, from coming and un coming into who she is called to be. She probably thought she already arrived. She's going to listen and be like, what? But it was just, you know, <laughs> she just talked more, I think, more freer than I've ever seen her talk before. And uh, that was beautiful to see. It really was. Um, and um, the girl's mom, you know, just just her coming out and sharing her story and stuff was really neat to see. It was cute. It was a lot of teen, teenage moms in there. A lot. And that was shocking to me only because I I truly didn't know. And it wasn't even like shocking in the fact of like, oh, my gosh, you know, the stigma. It was like I just had no idea. Well, so here it was again, this piece of a story that it's like I just I didn't know. Right. And for them to share it, I was like, wow, that's a part of your story. I had no idea. Well, you know, and that that thing has been such a stigma thing, you know, mm -hmm. like you ain't gonna make it, right? You a teenager, your kids huh? aren't gonna make it, they, right? And that's not the truth. Right. If you sat in that room, that's not the truth. If you were a pregnant teen girl who nobody knew was pregnant, and you sat in that room yesterday, you'd have been like, "I'm not by myself. Mm -hmm. I'm not my. I'm not alone." I'm not alone. And, you know, I don't know. Um, I, I really believe some friendships left. Some new friendships were developed there. It was good to see sure. Brenda. Um, I've always... And that was my first time being with her in person. Hey, Brenda. Shout out, Brenda. My first, <laughs> all these years, yeah. we never had been in the same room at the same time. Now, yeah. I feel like I know her. Right. I talked to her all these years, and it was like, hey, you're in front. You're in front of me. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of mm -hmm. nice to be there and to know part of Brenda's story. Um, you know her connection to her her husband, who passed away. Just that story and watching her, um, and and even for her telling a little bit about her journey where she is now. But it was so nice to you know be in the room with her. She's she's such a tiny mite. That's what's cute about her. <laughs> um. Um, the young girl who helped clean up at the end, just a, just a sweet girl. How do you say her name? Shaya, Shara? Shaya. Uh -huh. Shaya. Just, Shaya. oh, just a, just a sweet girl. Really sweet girl. 
Yeah. So, yeah. It was good. We can't wait. And that was the other thing that I got convicted of. I was like, no, oh, we can't only do this one time a year. Yeah. We don't need to wait. I don't know. We got to sit down and do the calendar for 2025. And here we go. Cause the retreat that's information is coming out for next year, which I'm excited about, which again, will be time to bring people together. Um, and I know the theme for next year, it is connection and doing it different than I've ever done it, but it's about making connections. And, um, you know, that's, that's what God wants us to do is connect. Um, you know, that, that we stand in the middle with someone else, um, you know, and do we offer a word of love and encouragement? I felt like that was what was happening in there. Nothing but a word of, of encouragement and, you know, um, feeling encouraged and pushed through and, um, you know, and I'm sure some left, all of us probably left like, you know, there's some improvement that can be made, you know, as you self-examine and you remember, you know, um, that some things matter and then there's some things that don't matter. And, and if anything that mattered that, uh, that we left was that we all have the one who stands in the middle for each of us. And that is Jesus, that he was in every story. He was in the middle for all of us, even the young girls. I mean, you know, he's always been there. And he's always going to be there. And that is the beauty of it, that God was right there in the middle. Um, and then to know we're not alone. To know we're not alone. And and we're going to do it again. So get ready for Christmas. That's going to be another time of gathering. And I'm excited about what 2025 will be like and getting more time of coming to together and connecting. Um, Monica came all the way from El Centro. She's such a, mm -hmm. she's so tiny too. Um, and just a very quiet one, but she came all the way from El Centro. So it was good to see her. So it wasn't like everybody was, what, a 10 mile radius from us. You know, they right. came, you know, we had people from Temecula uh, come down, you know, a good hour drive come down. So yeah. Two. Are those clothes technically a Murrieta? Or are they Who? different? I don't know. They're right there together. I think oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, and Cindy and... Christina go to the same church that's up there, mm -hmm. which is neat mm -hmm. too. So yeah. So yeah. It was it was a good to learn what people wanted to be. <laughs> that was cute. A lot of people thought right. they were gonna be dancers. It's really funny how I... is. Mm -hmm. And nurses too. That came up quite a bit. I thought that was really interesting. I know. Everybody wanna be a nurse. But okay, mm -hmm. but when you look at ages in the room when i was growing up you either be a teacher or a nurse oh uh, okay really okay. what else you, and those were the two important things mm, you know in that, that era. yeah and now the door is open and you can pick whatever you know now we have people who want me veterinarians you know so, right <laughs> so the door just opened up but yeah um so if i could end this is there anything else you want to add to it no, I'm going to read the declaration, though, the connection declaration. Okay. I just want to say, wherever you are, where you have the power of connection. Mm -hmm. I think that was very evident in the room. That connection is not, it's not passive. Mm -hmm. It is powerful. It is meaningful. And it just enriches him, you know, because like you said, he's at the center of all of our stories. And I mean, I wasn't a teen mom. But I saw Jesus in every single one of those yeah. women in the room yeah. as they shared what they had gone through. Yeah. You know, so it didn't true. matter that that's not my story, but that is my story. Yeah. Because that's my sister friend. And that's looking at that woman today, you just go, wow. Yeah. She got a hold to her. She held back. And look at that. Yeah. So. Um, before you read the declaration, I have to, you know, give kudos to my team. From you, Tamara, Cindy, y'all rocked it. Um, it came together. We prayed, like you said, we prayed and fasted, and it was nothing but absolutely amazing. The food was amazing. It was enough food um, for everyone. We did the art, but I do, I have to thank you guys for an amazing job. 
and coming alongside of me and doing it. It was, it was, it was good. It was so good. Mm -hmm. Even at the end when we cleaned up and we took our last picture together, it was great. So I, I do have to give my kudos to my team. Thank you so much. Um, if you're listening, I want you to know this, that you're not alone. You're not alone. So today, take comfort in knowing that he is always with us in the middle of all our circumstances. But also look for ways that you can stand with others in the middle of their lives. And know that we're here. Uh, we're going to have more gatherings. We do meet in person two times a month. For Bible study on Saturdays, come join us. It is a very sweet atmosphere. We've literally been reading the same book since May, and it's been fun. Um, we take our time, but we, you know, we want to open that up. We have a Christmas uh, breakfast mugs exchange coming up the third Saturday of Christmas. Um, so look for information on that. But I just want you to know you're not alone. You're not alone. Um, and don't ever feel like you're alone. Reach out. Let's be friends with others and know that being friends with others count. It counts. It helps them and it helps you. It helps us as we walk in this life and how we do life. We need each other. I need you. What's that song by Hezekiah Walker? I need you. You need me. We need each other to survive. I think that's how it goes. But I need you. And we are here for you. So thank you for being here. Thank you for your support. Amen. And then Candace is the queen now of writing declarations. I'm going to give her her kudos. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, what, what are we doing? Here we go. But if you do listen to the podcast on a regular, every week we share a declaration and we probably uh betty said this um and i want to give uh, kudos to betty too betty wasn't able to make it but she did uh donate some spots so i want to i want to give a shout out to her thank you so awesome. much betty for Thanks, always betty. always rocking in that area thank you um but um betty said in one of the one of my lives one morning we should do a book on uh declarations Let's just do it. Mm. Let's just mm. do it. Let's just do it. Yeah. We have them. And yes. There's, I've got nothing to say because you're 100% right. We have them. We have them. We don't, I mean. Why not? Why not? Mm. All righty. So it's all yours now. And then you'll pray us out. Lord, I was made for a connection. You have a desire for me to be with you and your children. So I believe in the promises that you have spoken. I know that I have your unconventional, unconditional love. And because of that, I have the power and the position to also know, love, and enjoy your people. I was not created to be alone. And I know that the love that is shared is in connection, allows for the faith and the hope to be evident in my life. So in this moment, I say that I love my sister friends and I speak the same blessings over them that I do myself. We will see each other as the image bearers of God and we will count on each other. There is no fear about what anyone can do to us because it is our father that has brought us together. Lord, we thank you for each piece that we hold and represent. We are the answer to a vision as we stand together. Lord, we were made for connection. Hmm. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the, your truth, your truth, Lord, your faithfulness, your love that we can be connected. You didn't create man to be alone, and that goes for us in everything that we do. So I think I am thankful for every woman that was in the room, for their families that were represented, for the situations, the circumstances, but I am grateful for the, their stories. Their stories, God, where you were at the center. Their stories in which they called upon you. They sought you out. They sat with you. They cried with you. They prayed with you, Lord. And you brought them up and out. And your promise of an abundant life has been ringing true. So I pray that we do that, not just this one time a year, Lord, but in everything that we do. We pick up the phone more often. 
We call each other. We meet up with each other. We make the intentional time to stand on the truth of your word because my sister's story friend, my sister friend's story is my story too. So let there be healing. Let there be reconciliation because we're going to move as one the way in which you created us. So we just thank you, Lord, for the gift and the position and the power of connection. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sister friend. We'll see you next week right here on A Cup of Soul.